involve you understanding, looking at log graphs is going to understand, uh, require that you understand from grade 11 what the inverse of a function looks like, what it looks like graphically, and how it's related algebraically. The inverse of a function is switching x and y. I mean, at a, at a basic level here, I'm going to write it up at the top here. Can anybody who's talking stop, please? Because I'm finding it kind of distracting and I have to shout over top of your voice. The inverse of a function, y equals x plus 4. The inverse of that is a function that undoes that. That function takes a number and adds 4. So its inverse is going to be what? How do you undo that? If this is called f of x, its inverse is going to be the function that undoes that. And the notation is f with this little negative 1 up here for f inverse. If this function takes a value and adds 4, what function would undo that? Take, the, take a number and do what? Minus 4, right? That's Those are... Adding 4 and subtracting 4 are inverse operations. They cancel each other out, right? If you start with a number, you add 4, you subtract 4, you get what you started with. There's lots of things you know that are inverses, right? If you have um, if you have a function that is... Everybody has a different name, I guess, here. G of x. If G of x is... Um, x to the third power, what's the inverse of that? What what function would undo that operation? Yeah, instead of cubing cube root of a function, cube root of that value, think about a set of numbers. If you take if you take a three and you put it into this function, f of x, you know, you, you think of a function as a machine that changes numbers, what do you get out of that? function. What does it give you? It gives you 7. If you take that 7 and you put it into f inverse, oops, what does that give you? If you take the 7 that you got there, you put it into this function, 7, take away 4, you get 3, right? A concept that you should know is that if 3, 7 is on this function, what point is going to be on this function? 7, 3. You get it. The inverse has x and y switched. x and y are switched in an inverse function. If this point here, if x is 3, y is 7, then on its inverse, 7 and 3. Any point we come up with is going to be like that. The same for, for this down here. Okay? The same for that. Say, you know, exact same thing is going to occur there. Pick any number or any pair of numbers that you know that work there. Um, if you put in a a 2 here, whoops, if you put in a 2 here, what do you get? Into g, this function, you get 8. If you take that 8 and you put it into this function, g inverse, what do you get out of there? You get your 2 back, right? So that means that 2, 8 is on this function. It means that 8, 2 is on this function. So think about what that means in terms of a graph. Okay? Uh, so we're going to go to this graph here. We're actually going to, not that, let's do this instead. There's, I mean, I'm going to look at y equals 2 to the x first. But let's pretend we didn't know what it was looked like and we're going to put some points on here. Um, so let's delete that. If we didn't know what it looked like, 2 to the x, just think through. 2 to the power of x, so 2 to the power of 0 is 1. 2 to the power of 1 is 2. 2 to the power of 2 is 4, if we uh, bring this down here. 2 to the power of 8 is 3. We could put this one at a half. I'm pretty close there, sort of. A quarter. Sort of looks like that, right? I'm going to get rid of those because they're not actually on the... Whoops. Um, they're not actually on the curve. But we'll, we'll go back and put the curve in there, right? This is actually y equals 2 to the x. What is its inverse? What's the inverse of y equals 2 to the power of x? If we're looking at this same thing here and we're looking at inverses, if I make this, okay, so if I say h of x is going to be 2 to the x, 
Or do you want to start easier here and do 10? Because it's, it's easier to describe what it is. If h of x is 10 to the power of x, what's h inverse? What's the inverse of that? Log. Yeah, it's log, log x, right? The, those are inverses. What would it be if it's, I'm running out of letters here, j of x? What if this is 2 to the x? What would this be? <coughs> j inverse of x? What would that be? Log base 2, right? Now, we can't graph that on the calculator or on this software, but we, we can do it indirectly. How could I graph that on that software or on the calculator? I could write this as what? If I wanted log base 2 of x, I'm going to go back to this change of base rule here. What's it going to be equal to here? Log x divided by log 2, right? You have this change of base rule here. Log base A of B is log B over log A. So if we want to graph that, we can we can do this as log X over log 2. So hopefully that won't complicate things, but that's how we graph that log base 2. But let's start with 10 to the X, although I already started graphing points. Are you okay if I put in here then that we'll use 2? Y equals um, log X. I'm not sure if I need brackets around the X. Divided by log... 2. Not sure if I need brackets there or not. Let's see if it uh, looks like anything. Okay, how are those related to each other? Not sure, eh? We need... Uh, I'm not even going to... If I'm quiet, then she's too busy texting, so I can do this without her looking. You weren't, eh? Too bad. You get disgusting brown color then. No! no. Okay? No. Not just disgusting brown color. You get a very big thick line of disgusting brown color. Okay? There. Okay? That's the inverse of that. If you look at this now, what's uh, what's the relationship between those two things? It is kind of a mirror, right? It is. It is kind of symmetric. It's hard to see from the side, but if you um, if you put a line in here, it's symmetric over a certain diagonal line here. What's that line called? It's a line that kind of goes up here, right? I'm going to draw it this way first. It's a line that goes through where? Where's the line here? Y equals X. Yeah, it's Y equals X. It's right through here, right? That line right through there? It's a mirror image through there. If... If that point 2, 4 is on there, okay, let's draw the line without those dots so we don't confuse things. It's called y equals x. If that line is, if that point is on there, 2, 4 is on 2 to the x, what point is on this inverse? What point has to be on that inverse? 4, 2, right? It's that. These are, you know, this is kind of one diagonally box away from there. This is one diagonally away over here. This point is here. Without even thinking about the numbers, we know this point's going to be on there. That's a reflection across that line. And just confirm that it works. 1, 2 is on that curve, so 2, 1 is on this curve. 0, 1's on there, so 1, 0's on here. It works, you know, the same for every point there. Those are inverses of each other. The graph of a, a logarithmic function is going to be... Um, I can't... Uh, let me see if I can make this smaller here. No... We'll kind of compress it and look at what it looks like here. Try and still keep it equal. Is that look? Do the boxes look square there? Yeah, sort of. An exponential function goes up to the right here. It has a horizontal asymptote. What can you say about a logarithmic graph? Doesn't does it have a horizontal asymptote? Yeah, it's going to have this vertical one. This is a reflection of this, so everything's reflected. This this line that's horizontal, this imaginary asymptote, if you reflect that horizontal line, it's going to become this vertical line here. Okay, if you do that reflection, it has it passes through the it's got a y intercept here of zero one. This has an x intercept. You're almost at ten. Thank you. This one this exponential graph has a range of y is greater than zero. What has to be true of this graph then? 
I'm okay. I got actually I got till about ten twenty or something like that. What's true about the you think of what's true about the domain here? The domain is restricted for that. The domain is to the right side of zero. X has to be greater than zero. You know that.